kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone? So real quick, before you did that, did you? More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the um, And your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that kooka. You know, I'm a little more strict with what I'm I'm looking at. Uh, hey, everyone out there, YouTube land, Facebook, I uh, and the real estate Metro Detroit off market real estate group. Welcome. We are here. Um, we are talking about five things that you need to know about wholesaling five secret tips okay um with that being said okay uh we are going to be out here okay five secret uh every wholesaler needs to know um so i just trying to get a, a a minute for some other people to come in just in case we are answering questions live here on the air if you need uh, a ask your questions in the comments, uh, in the comments off to the side, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on Facebook, does not matter. Um, ask your questions. We'll present them on here. I will answer them. Um, I don't have a guest today. It's just me talking all about the five tips. And I actually have a bonus tip for you as well. But we have five tips. All wholesalers need the secret five secrets you need to know about wholesaling real estate so uh it's a tongue twister sorry about that um with that being said i think we have uh given some people enough time so with i'm gonna go to our first the first thing that you need to know is kind of obvious it's build relationship building a relationship with the seller okay i'm gonna skip going to doing all the lists and trying to figure out uh what list you need to get what all of that all of that you can learn that and anywhere okay but if you don't build a relationship with that seller i'm gonna tell you you're not gonna get very far okay when you build a relationship with the seller it's going to be no matter if somebody tries to backdoor you through that deal they're not going to be able to because you've built that relationship i've actually i'll tell you a quick story i had a property that i had under contract and it was in detroit and i went out and i marketed the property okay i had there was probably about four or five you know we marketed it out, you know, things, it, it, it was on the borderline, whether it was overpriced or not, what well, we, we tested the waters. I had a couple buyers put it, I uh, actually try to reach out to the seller directly and try to poach that listing. What happened is, is they tried to go with the lower offer. Okay. Straight to the seller. And because I had good rapport, built a good relationship with that seller, all that seller did was send me screenshots of that other person. Now that person is no longer on my buyer's list. Okay. You want to really alienate a wholesaler? Try to do that. I'm tell you, you won't get very far in this business. All right. Um, so build your relationship with your seller. Um, and then I'll, I'll tell you another story where uh, the opposite happened. We didn't build a relationship with the seller and we were trying to sell a, uh, a triplex in Detroit and somebody, another wholesaler came in and stole the property. They offered them, it was 20 grand more than what we were trying to sell it for, okay? Needless to say, that wholesaler did not live up to his end it did not go through. We spent so much time on title with that property that it was it was crazy because we put so much time and effort and we should have put a, um, 
we should have put a notice memorandum on the property, but we didn't. Um, and I think to this day, it still hasn't sold, to be honest. So um, because of the way the market changed, it wasn't worth it because the guy didn't do anything with it. So uh, I think we tried to set, we sold it. We we're gonna have it sold for 25 grand. And he's like, well, I can get 40 grand from this other guy. And unfortunately it wasn't, it didn't work. So when something's too good to be true, it probably is. And it was a vacant property needed a full gut, full rehab, everything. So um, on to the next thing. I, I know we're kind of moving a little fast. Remember, if you have any questions in between any of these, put them in the chat. I'll have to answer them. If you're watching the replay, comment. I'll answer the questions. I definitely will. Um, I'll, I, I always check the replay and things like that. So um, the second one is listen. Okay. There are so many wholesalers out there. And I was guilty of it in the beginning too. They just want to get their spiel out. They want to get their uh, get they whatever their script is. They want to stick to that script and they want to get it out. Get it out. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just zip it. Listen. Ask open-ended questions and listen. Okay. They the seller will tell you exactly what they need, what they want. Okay. So. But you have to oh, ask open eye questions. As soon as if they're just at if they're just answering your question, yep, nope, okay. Either one, you're not asking open eye questions, or two, they're trying to get you off the phone. They're not very motivated, okay. Um, so that is one thing. Give me one second here. So that is one thing that you need to realize is that listening will get you a long way. Build relationships with the seller. Try to build common ground. Do not lie or anything like that just so you can have something in common. Um, and that will bring me to my next one or to um, my next ones coming up. But Number three, do what you say you're going to do. Okay. So many times there are wholesalers out there. There are people, there are, buy, there are sellers, or sorry, there are buyers out there. They don't do what they're going, they don't do what they say they're going to do. Okay. So many times. So, that is one big, big thing that you need to do is actually do what you say you're going to do. If you say you're going to give them a call back at 5 p.m. tomorrow, give them a call back at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Okay. Um, that goes back to number two, listening. Okay. By listening to them, you can tell exactly where their pain points are. You can also tell what their pet peeves are on, on people. All right. So again, do what you say you're going to do. If you're going to meet him at an appointment, don't be late. Be 15 minutes early. Check out the property. Check out the neighborhood first. Okay. Same thing goes for you damn buyers. Come on, man. All right. Don't be late. Check the traffic. All right. So I know you buyers are out there saying that. Now, I know I'm going through this kind of fast and I really would like any type of engagement out there. Please let me know what you guys think. Um, this is for the Metro Detroit off market real estate group. This is for our YouTube channel. You know, hit us back with comments. Let us know uh, what you think and, and what you think about each one of these. Are these not really secrets? You're right. They're not. But in my opinion, they're the most important. All right. The, the, they are the most important. All right. I call them secrets because these need, you need to know these, you need to do these. Okay. 
And not a, not a lot of people do, especially virtual wholesalers. They don't do these. All right. The number four, follow up. All right. Follow up with. Okay. Hold on. If you you follow up, ninety five percent of my deals, I get with follow up. Very rare do I get a deal on the first contact. It's very rare. Okay. When I'm when we're cold calling, we don't get them on the first contact. All right. I actually have a process where my VA calls them. When they say yes, they get all the information. It comes to me and I do the follow up. That's my process. Even when I follow up with them, it's still a lot of times it takes, you know, four or five time attempts of me contacting them, following up with them. Sometimes they don't answer. Sometimes the timing's off. Sometimes you have to keep following up. Put them in your CRM. Let them know if I had one one day uh, they answer the phone, which I was very surprised. But they answer the phone like, "Hey, uh, I was calling about your property on blah 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 Street. Uh, do you have a couple minutes to talk?" I uh, so on and so forth. You talked with my my assistant about this uh, last week, and or the other day or yesterday. I uh, they said. Well, actually, I'm on the way to the hospital. My my father's about to be, they're about to pull the plug on him and he, he's about to pass away. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I uh, take care of family first. I'll give you a call. I, uh, you know, how, how does Friday sound? Okay, great. Have a great day. Okay. I'm sorry to hear about your father. Now I put in my CRM. He was on the way to the hospital. He was, you know, his father was passing away. What's the first thing out of my mouth when I call him back? Hey, I'm very sorry to hear about your father. Uh, did you make it in time to say your goodbyes? Something like as simple as that. That builds relationships. That goes back to number one. That builds relationships. That builds rapport. Okay, one hundred percent. You need to follow all of these processes, okay? Following up with the sellers will you will build so much rapport, and the more somebody talks to you, the more comfortable they begin. Now, if you just talk with them out of the blue, and I uh, I've actually had this tested. Women are more likely to build rapport faster with a seller. Uh, for some reason, uh, sellers they they trust a woman's voice. They it's more feminine. Uh, it's very hard. It's a lot harder for a man. Okay, um, not being sexist, not doing anything like that. It, hell, it, it's harder for me. You have to put them at ease that you're there to help. Okay. Hey, this is what we normally do. If they're back on taxes, if you're on foreclosure, this is kind of our, our our area that we follow up. I'm not saying that that's what you are, but does does any of this uh, do you, are are you, do you have any of these issues or anything like that? Okay, but this is where we specialize. Okay, if not, okay, that doesn't fully disqualify you. But let me get a little bit more information about the property. And we can see what we can do. Something as simple like that. All right. The more you follow up, the more you listen, the more you 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 work with these, the better things will be. That I promise you. Okay. So let's go over the first four again. Build relationships. Number one. Okay. Building rapport. Listening. When you're listening, they will tell you, and you ask open-ended questions. They will tell you where their pain point is, what's going on. Hell, they'll tell you what they just ate for dinner last night. All right, they'll tell you everything. They'll open up to you. 
but you have to listen. Not only when you're listening, you just don't sit back and just do nothing. Okay. You do little, little nuances like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. I see it. Sh it That tells them that you're truly listening and you're following along. Okay. Yes, you need to listen, keep your mouth shut, but those little nuances of, mm hmm wow, oh, wow, okay. Those little things will tell the seller that you're actually listening to them, and that brings your level uh, of relationship building up a notch, okay? So, number three, do what you say you're going to do. If you're if you do a if you have an appointment set up, okay, set up, be there 15 minutes early. Check out the area. Or if you're not, be there at least on time. Okay. Um, go through it. Don't prom don't over promise and under deliver. Okay. You always under promise and over deliver as much as possible. Okay. I know it's hard to do in this market. It's very hard to do that and, and still get an appointment. But at the same point, you wanna you wanna build their expectations a little bit beforehand, be, you know, then you go out there. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room